How do you make a world for talking animals? When a story maker chooses to use anthropomorphic animals as their base, what do they do to make sure they fit into the new world? I mean, this goes for writers, illustrators, comic creators, film directors, the like. Is the setting in the distant future? Are these talking animals actually aliens from different worlds? Or maybe it's a fantasy setting with races of dogs and horses the way Dungeons and Dragons use orcs and dwarves. Or perhaps it's a metaphor for our current world mirroring society and technology as it is today. And most likely you'll use a combination of all these things. A fun exercise to furry world building is to simply take one of your characters and make them walk into a barber shop. Then what happens? Do they just get their hair cut or maybe just their head fur cut or is it like a full body trim with a spa treatment? I mean, how would they dry that after? Simply what's the function of a barber shop in your furry universe? I'm sure you've noticed you're stuck with me, Underbite, this week. A talking sheepdog getting a little off the top is culturally effed. A few weeks ago, our attention was drawn to a page ripped from an art class, a handout by Pete Emsley. Pete worked for Disney Animation Studios and taught cartooning at Sheridan College for 11 years. It has a four-point scale of anthropomorphism for cartoon animals. You have also likely seen a handful of these kinds of images by various artists showing police-like lineups of animal-to-anthro transformations to illustrate different degrees of anthropomorphism. This week, we're going to look at a five-point scale in anthropomorphization with examples and how we can use such a scale when discussing anthromedia. Level 1. In the first level of anthropomorphism, animals have a much fuller range of human emotion and indicate an awareness to the antics of their humans. They remain animal-like, standing naturally at all fours, and can only communicate with their animal noises or nonverbal communication. This level is great for sidekicks and background humor, but rarely takes center stage in a story. You've seen this a lot in movies from Disney, such as Tangled with Maximilian or Frozen with Sven. An exception to the center stage rule is Spirit of Cimmerillion. Level 2. In the second level, animals are still feral, but can only talk to each other unless some plot device makes a human character able to communicate on their level. The animals are in a secret world that the audience gets to see, but the humans of their world are oblivious to their dramas. You can see this kind of world in films like The Plague Dogs, Fox the Hound, Lady and the Tramp, and Balto. All of these are grounded in a very real feeling world with humans towering over smaller creatures. Ratatouille is also a great example of this type of world. Level 3! Finally, we have our animals walking upright and wearing some clothing. They retain their approximate scale to their non-anthro counterparts and are likely to interact with humans if they existed in their world. They still maintain some behaviors and traits of their species, like sniffing, hunting, grooming. Examples include Rescuers Down Under, Mouse Guard, Redwall, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Zootopia. These worlds are fanciful, magical, and they feel impossible. Zootopia is great for this because it points to the oddities that this level of anthropomorphism presents, like whether or not our characters need to wear pants. Level 4 totally humanized, scaled up to similar human size. They wear more clothes and exist in a human world very comfortably. Here you could have an elephant, a mouse, and a horse, all fit into the same car with room to spare. This setting can be very gritty and down to earth, or very otherworldly and fantastic. You can find Bugs Bunny here, as well as Bojack Horseman, or even the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Autumnlands, or Star Fox. In our own addition to this scale, level five. Thumbs, humans, yep, yep, big deal. The anthro characters are complete stand-ins for humans, either as direct metaphor or a shortcut for characterization. There is no world building to make an animal friendly universe and instead our characters are just humans with animal masks put on as a stylistic choice. It is often mistaken for level four, but it is really just humans made to look more dramatic 
Furries are often in this level, showing off very human features with an animal head and tail, and sometimes other details like claws or feet thrown in. TV Tropes calls this the petting zoo human. The graphic novel Mouse comes to mind. Mouse is the true story of Art Spiegelman's father surviving Nazi-occupied Poland and his internment at the death camp Auschwitz. All of the Jewish characters are represented by mice, and all of the Germans are represented by cats. Similarly, the ongoing series Black Sad is a gritty detective noir that uses animals for characterization. The artists here use the color of fur, not always the species, as an indication of race and groups of people. An example is how the Arctic Nation represents white supremacists not limited to race, but instead any animal with all white fur. Conversely, this bar is occupied entirely by different species of lizards. And as much as we love the artwork and the characters of Black Sad, there's nothing about the world they live in to indicate a society of animal people. And let's explore this a little further. Most of the content we like to explore as furries are level two and up. I like to think of the scale as a spectrum, letting us get really specific with categorizing our anthropomorphic media. Sonic would be like a 3.6, being equal scale to humans, such as Mario, but still wearing shoes and no pants. Zootopia would be at a 3.9, not a full four because the animals maintain their size and their society hosts very specific species services. Not everyone wears shoes, but everyone seems to have a cell phone. Or the novel White Thing, which is somewhere between a one and a two. We get the inner monologue of the lead wolf, but no human interactions or exchange dialogue with other canines. You can also find works that fall into multiple categories. In Disney's Pinocchio, Geppetto's cat Figaro shows level 1 anthropomorphism, but later in the film we meet Honest John the Fox and Gideon the Cat, who both fall into the fourth category of anthropomorphism, both walking upright and wearing clothes. Now that you have your animal characters, they need a world to live in comfortably. You have to ask a lot of questions when you want to apply this scale to furry media or if you're doing some furry world building yourself. A good place to start is asking yourself, are there humans in this world? Do they interact with animals or animal people differently than other humans? You also need to consider the economy of an animal world. Is there anything about the world they live in that is catered to animals? Full body grooming, cat scratchers, we're talking species specific goods and services. How is the architecture or city planning adapted for animals from a diverse range of ecosystems? Is mouse housing going to be different from a giraffe apartment or do they pay the same in rent? If they're level three and up and stand upright, are their legs still reminiscent of animal legs or are they more human? Does everyone wear pants? Do they need shoes? Or some of those things like a Mickey Mouse universe thing where some do and some don't. Are the clothes tailored to animal specifics like tails, webbed feet, or digigrade legs? Do they even have tails? In the worlds of Bojack Horseman and Black Sad, they don't. Do our animal people eat meat? Or maybe just fish? Are the fish anthropomorphic? Do they eat each other? If your protagonist is an apex predator like in The Lion King, do you show them hunting or eating? Or is it ignored, like Donald Duck and his pals eating this chicken? Or addressed with vegetarian predators, like in Finding Nemo? What sort of wildlife exists if all of our wildlife are civilians? Or maybe wildlife are completely different and new creatures, like these wild lizards in Usagi Yojimbo. Though weirdly, Usagi still also rides horses. Or is it like an Arthur universe in which Dogman can walk his dog? Let us know down in the comments. To determine if your furry content is level 5, just ask. Could you swap the animal characters for humans and still have the world and story intact? If the answer is no, then you have a more complicated world on your hands. It's fun to pick apart these nuances, and I encourage all of you watching out there to nitpick your favorite furry media with this 5 point scale. And if you're writing or drawing your own furry content, I hope these questions get you thinking on how to refine your style and build a better world for your furries. We have no canon of our own, only a loose theme of animal characters. 
why don't you pick apart your favorite furry media and let us know in the comments below. I've been your host, Underbite. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Bob Rust here with another beautiful landscape I call landscape number B. I'm using shades of white and red, but you at home, you can use any colors you like when you make your effed up art. You can use colors like uh, red and white. Now, if you like Culturally F, make sure to share it and tag that special someone who you think might really appreciate our videos. If you want to support us, we got some t-shirts for sale. You can also visit our Patreon page. Some happy little brush strokes on our, on our landscape here. Really, really try and cheer this landscape up. It's looking a little grumpy. Just happy little brush strokes.